All right, we are back. Me and Cop back together again for another new player Mythic Plus guide that we've been working on here, trying to help him go from noob to pro, as he's calling it. And this time we're in Waycrest Manor. Now, we're in this dungeon for a very specific reason. <laughs> Cop, why don't you tell him why? <laughs> I hate this place, Metro. It scares me. I get lost. Yeah. Would, would, would I be right in saying that this is your least confident dungeon? Probably, yeah, absolutely. Um, this and Shrine of the Storm, just because I haven't, oh, I think I've done Shrine of the Storm once. So, okay. and a big part of why is because there's multiple different pathways, and uh, Cop's not, I mean, he's not famous for his navigation skills, let's put it that way. So, <laughs> I think the focus of what we're going to do here today is I'm going to teach him everything that he needs to know about the ups and downs of this dungeon. We're going to go through 100% of the dungeon's uh, actual surface area. And we'll talk about the different routes because this is actually something that everybody should be aware of. If you're doing this for the first time or, you know, even if you've done it a few times, you still might discover surprises in this dungeon. So hopefully we'll learn everything we need to learn today. And, uh, yeah, hopefully Cop will get what he needs to learn about the paths. But uh, typically you walk up here and uh, you see actually see the first boss, well, depending on the route. You see the bosses are standing there, kind of guarding the stairs. A lot of times there's an emissary here. Uh, it does look like with the new season that there'll be um, one of the portals there as well, depending, I don't know if you're going to vary it or not, but it was when we tested it. So out of the gate, you're going to have some stuff going on. These mobs that we're fighting right now are very easy to kill. Uh, they're, they're pretty much free count. They have very little health, and they're just perfect. Like any dungeon you do at Mythic Plus, you really want to walk out of the gate with all your CDs up. Um, a lot of classes even, you know, use their CDs before the dungeon starts. So this is an ideal pull to pull both sides here. But if you do not need the count, you really don't want to pull both sides. Uh, a lot of the times I'll just get the right side or the left side, depending on what's going on. And uh, then we'll just run up the stairs and the other side just kind of sits there. So that's something to consider. But uh, I don't know if you're actually aware of this cop, but did you know that there's basically four different routes that you can take in this dungeon? Wow, I, I always understood that there was a lot right or left at the start, and after that I just get lost and try to follow the tank. Yeah, so all four of these doors in the main area here can be opened, all right? So unfortunately, you know, we're doing this on normal, whatever. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't have the ability to open the door, but we are going to go through 100% of the surface area of this dungeon, talk about every possible route. And actually, perfectly, we get what I believe to be mathematically the most difficult route in this in this dungeon possibility because the mobs first of all the few mobs that you'll fight up here are a pain compared to the stuff that you might fight on the other side of the dungeon but more so is going right in general almost always leads you to a factor of extreme count you do not you pretty much have no opportunity to go under count when you go right whereas if you go left you skip a lot of stuff that you don't need uh, especially on the way to Rawl the gluttonous and it just helps you with count a lot. It makes the dungeon go a lot faster. And early on in the expansion, a lot of people were straight up calling it, if you went right, you just were not going to upgrade the key. But, you know, that depends on the, the, the level, of course. So the main thing here that you want to work uh, work on with these two mobs is this mob type. These uh, dogs aren't really that dangerous. There's not much to talk about. They do a fair amount of magic damage and stuff. But the marksman is the real problem. She's going to do a lot of different things that are going to be really painful if you're not... Uh, Basically, a lot of different traps and a lot of different ranged type abilities. So for me as a bloody decay, I like to kind of pull this back. But either way, you're going to want to grab it and take it out here because you really don't want to fight it in that corridor. Uh, it can oftentimes cause a lot of problems just because of the small AOEs that are going to go on the ground. But it could also even pull uh, other trash, which we'll take a look at when we get in there. But um, yeah, typically this is how I would start this dungeon. As you see those explosives uh, a lot of aoe damage that can happen in this dungeon so you just got to be cognizant if you're going top right and it's the same pretty much same bottom right uh, we'll take a look at the the downstairs real quick and that cop we could actually just jump down here uh, we'll show what's down here but yeah this pack here that we've just engaged is actually uh, the same deal uh, you got a marksman and a survivalist which is technically a melee mob but we did aggro a rune weaver so let's kill all this trash and then we'll talk about what these mobs specifically are. In fact, uh, while we do, you see those red circles there. That's from the marksman as we're describing. But uh, as we're killing this mob, you'll see there um, this kind of like organ looking thing. Now, the whole dungeon is actually a giant organ. If you've ever looked at uh, the outside of it, have you ever seen, have you ever flown above this dungeon, Kyle? I've flown above it, but I've never paid much attention. Uh, yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, you should check, a, check it out. Uh, check a look at it whenever you get a chance. 
It's like this giant organ right out of like maybe like Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that sticking out of the roof. And uh, it's actually a key mechanic in this dungeon, which I think a lot of people don't know about. This organ, if it was had that black glow to it that it had when we jumped down here, mm -hmm. that means it's going to summon one of these witches. And uh, these witches are particularly dangerous. They're basically a heavy caster. Um, typically, if you're fighting them, you probably don't want to interrupt too many of their abilities. But, you know, you want to interrupt the volley ability that they have because it's going to hit everybody. But they do this etch ability, and it's kind of just like a, a single target channel. So a lot of people believe that it's best to not interrupt that because it makes them not able to cast their other ability that it's way more dangerous. But the main thing to notice here is that you probably would not have any idea about that. That organ there is going to be the precursor to summoning them. So whenever you run by an organ with some black stuff next to it, be aware that you might summon a uh, an ad. And look at this. Kind of weird. But anyway, um, so let's go back upstairs real quick then just to talk about something that we missed. So again, that, that's that's basically both right pathways. Um, the downstairs one is definitely better than the upstairs one just because this hallway is particularly painful to fight mobs in. And uh, it, downstairs, it's a lot easier to get out. But you'd be even even in worse count. Now, these mobs in here are mobs that you don't... Uh, like You literally don't fight them anywhere. In fact, you see they have these, these weird masks on. <laughs> you see that? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. They do, it's a, bit, too. it's a bit creepy, almost, right? Yeah. But, uh, so as you see, another organ with the black glow on it, so more mobs, um, you know, another heart's bane, bind twister this time, though. So. But anyway, uh, we're showing you these mobs, not because they're particularly interesting for Mythic Plus, but because of the opposite. You really do not want to aggro these mobs, and I have seen it quite a lot, where people come top right, and they get a little bit confused by this mob pack here. Like, you know, we'd be fighting the mobs that were here. They'd be dropping AoE stuff. We'd try to run out of it, and some fool runs this way, and that is that. You've now aggroed another pack. So uh, this dungeon is pretty much known for stuff like that. The, the mob density is very high at times, and you really got to be careful. So, all right. So anyway, we've, uh, you know, we, we, we've gone upper right. We're coming this way now. And this is where the count gets uh, kind of complicated because... You can't really avoid this. There's no way you can avoid this hallway. And uh, all you can do is hope because there's more randomness to it. Um, so that maggot ability is actually interruptible. If you ever see a, an ability called infest from one of the maggots themselves, you want to try to kick that. Especially as a, a melee, you could stun it, ex a ring, etc. Uh, so actually, yeah, here we got the perfect RNG. Position. So another element of randomness in this dungeon is whether or not this door is open as well. And I think, you know, people suggest that it's predictable once you get the first path that everything else cascades off it but one way or the other i uh, i don't know that too much about that but all i know is that this door is not open so that means we now have to go all the way around to the other side to even enter this room or sometimes you might get to this side and you'd be able to just walk right in here and that would save some of the count that we're going to have to pull on this kind of left side of the second hallway here including that patrol that that mob that we just fought there while we were talking about the door that's actually a patrol and you can avoid that uh, if you get lucky actually if not you're gonna fight it but uh, if, if it pats at the right time when you're on you know one side or the other it will uh, effectively be skipped and then that's another good way to skip counting yeah as you gotcha. see we're effectively gonna have to pull 100% of this hallway there's no way we'll avoid uh, this stuff and to get out of this into the main foyer we are gonna have to pull that pack across from us as well so yeah, pretty complicated stuff now this room is uh, another one that's really complicated and the trash in here isn't particularly dangerous uh, it's mostly the same stuff we've been fighting but uh, these steward mob types here I mark uh, the one with skull and the other one's a pat over there okay um, that blue the, the marker the blue marker it patrols and it can cause a lot of problems on say a bolstering week might try to pull one pack and he will pat into you while you're doing it uh, or as you see there i tried to pull them separate and it got another mob so just be aware that there's a patrol in this room it's not the most dangerous thing obviously especially on a normal week but any week where you're worried about trash it really complicate things so typically one way or the other no matter which direction we come there's only this one pig and then there's these mobs here so i like to get both of these packs together but the main thing you really 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 got to be aware of in this dungeon is not pulling the boss in this room, okay? Also, the stewards are notable for that AOE silence ability. You really want to target them and interrupt them. But let's talk now about the boss because this is a very unique room. It's very small. It's, it's quite wide, but it's it's not very deep. 
and it's extremely easy to pull this boss very very often i've seen it happen a lot with warlocks because their pets kind of go running all around and do all kinds of aoe and i've had it happen myself a lot with dancing rune weapon this pack that we just killed here uh, the ones that would have been right in front of us in front of these tables here that is a prime target to use dancing rune weapon on there's a lot of mobs high volume a couple dangerous mobs so for me i'd run in here with dancing rune weapon up pop two blood boils and the dancing rune weapon would hit the boss and i'd imagine a lot of abilities might do that so maybe uh your um my zwen your clones might do the same yeah storm earth and fire if i'm not careful and and hit a, hit it again to make sure it's single target you know yep. like if they're yep. they're concentrating in that even the yeah, so uh the one essence would probably go off and hit it there's a couple options i'm sure uh it's basically on the tank to stop it um, if you just grab them and pull them back, so a lot of times uh, I would have like kind of aggroed them from right here, this doorway, I would D and D, or maybe I would usually actually grip them out and then kind of run around the corner with them so there's no way anybody can actually hit them. But just be aware that if you fight that pack, especially in this room, you got to be very careful as the tank and you got to be aware that the DPS might make a mistake. And if you make that mistake, it's probably going to be a wipe. This boss is stationary, so he cannot run out of a room. Typically, you know, if you pull a boss at a Mythic Plus, it's not the end of the world. You just run them out of their playable area, and they usually reset. This boss cannot reset. It is stationary. And uh, the big problem here is that in order to reset him, you have to run out of the entire area. So basically, this banquet hall you see on the map, it says we're in the banquet hall. We would have to leave the banquet hall. So now let's recap the problems here. We have pulled Rawl the Gluttonous, and in order to leave the banquet hall, we either have to go out that way and pull trash, or we have to run all the way back around here. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah it's not going to happen. Just, it's just impossible. So um, all the time uh, that we do aggro him, he is doing this AoE ability to it. Maybe we could actually pull it and show. He's going to do, like, this massive AoE. So let's see what happens. Uh, yeah, consume all. There we go. So he's going to be hitting us for, obviously, on normal. It's not doing anything, but um, he's going to be hitting us constantly. And let's uh, show, let's run and see how far it takes to actually reset it. But as you see, we are, like, you know, 70, 80 yards away from him. And, uh, oh, it actually uh, works works a little bit easier than I thought. But let's be let's be clear. That ability that he casts will hit you for about 40% of your health on a real key. So he's not going to get four of those off. You know what I mean? If he does, you're dead. So you're never going to get out one way or the other. It's, it's pretty rare to get out. But... Other than that, just, again, the stewards, and even when you're on this side of the room, you really got to be careful. You don't want to tank him too close to Raw because of pets and random AoE, so. The boss itself is pretty easy. Not much to it. There's going to be, I'll put some markers. There's going to be four adds that come in. Uh, they come in kind of from the doorways, effectively. All right, so basically one at each door. If they get to him and he eats them, they buff him, effectively. Uh, they can get to him and then he has to cast an eating ability on them like it, it takes a little a little bit it's not immediate um but yeah if he's not doing another ability he'll pretty much get them immediately but if he is doing another ability you usually have a couple seconds there so great option as a monk you ring a piece um you can literally just wait until they're kind of right next to him and then ring all four of them out you know what i mean there gotcha yeah and then as a DK and, you know, like a death grip and a, a great option is to kind of wait until they're about halfway through their run. And then I will gore fiends all four of them together. I have to do that because otherwise they wouldn't be close enough. But I'll gore fiends all four of them together and then slow them with D&D. &D and uh, they get killed pretty quick that way. But of course, you can only do that the one time. So on really hard tyrannical keys, this fight is actually pretty difficult because those ads really they, they come quick and they stack up. Let's put it that way. You're going to be attacking the ads for a long time. So... It's in your best interest to stun them or root them or even hard CC them. Again, as a monk, you have the option to paralyze one. But a lot of people just ignore them on like lower keys or keys that aren't particularly dangerous. People just ignore them. Let them get close and then kind of AOE them down. Gotcha. Uh, the other big mechanic here, obviously, is the, um, the puddles on the ground. Yeah, that, that's a great place to put ring, basically. So no matter what, whichever direction they're coming from, they couldn't possibly get to them. Uh, but yeah, this um, this mechanic there is actually somewhat difficult too on higher keys. It's a serious slow, and when there's a lot out, it's going to really be a problem. Obviously on normal, it doesn't summon the adds, like, but on um, mythic and higher, it's going to summon adds every time he does that as well. 
but this tenderized mechanic is what makes it complicated. Like, you have to run through it, and if you've got a DK, you're gonna explode by a, a dramatic amount, so. Uh, so there's the call servant, and he's doing other mechanics as well. Uh, if the call servant got to him while he was doing, say, the pulverized mechanic, he wouldn't, he wouldn't eat them immediately. It would take a little bit of time, so you have a little bit of extra time. Gotcha. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to the second half of the dungeon, effectively. Um, whatever the first boss is, is the boss you want to lust on, but another problem with coming left is that a lot of people believe lust is wasted because left takes so much longer to get to a boss, whereas right takes almost, well, uh, th this direction, I mean to say, right when you enter the dungeon, sorry. Um, but when you come to the banquet hall first is what I mean. Uh, it takes a lot longer to get through the trash. So uh, you might even see people who actually recommend lusting before the boss and then pulling all the trash to the second boss and then coming and doing a boss with lust instead. Uh, this is something that I ran into randomly while I was pugging and it really kind of stunned me. I didn't expect it at all and it kind of ruined the run because I wasn't expecting it. But you should be aware that if anybody tries, I mean, as a DPS, it doesn't really matter, but yeah. if anybody tries to lust on trash in the side of the dungeon, you're going to end up not fighting the boss. You're not going to have lust for the boss, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to then pull the rest of the trash and wait for lust, basically. And then at that point, a lot of people would just use lust on the second boss, because the first boss really, the, the pig is the easiest boss in here for sure, so something to keep in mind. Now this, uh, this little courtyard here is a pain. Yeah, I guess, uh, this courtyard here is a pain. Uh, there's two packs of the dogs, and this this like quadrant of the dungeon is where bolstering really gets messy here because these mobs are basically free mobs. They have almost no health compared to the rest the rest of the pack. And uh, if you you know fight them on a normal week, they don't do anything. But if you're fighting them on something like sanguine bolstering, etc., you really 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 gotta be careful here. I like to pull both packs at once, no matter what, and this is actually lined up perfectly. I can get both packs very easily, so that's our goal. But um, a lot of the times, if you do uh, pull aggressively here, you're going to end up with extra stuff, and you really got to make sure you don't pull that left pack, as you see. That pack, right now, at least often has an emissary in it in the future. I don't know what's going to happen, but um, typically I would just grab this mob as well. Now, this Thorn Shaper, something to keep in mind here. It's going to cast an ability called uh, something like an effigy, uh, reconstruct effigy or something like that. Uh, he's going to try to heal any, uh, basically, aberrations, I believe. Like, So the dogs, basically mobs that look like this are going to get healed, okay? The, the Kind of like the, the wicker looking mobs. The dogs will get healed and that, that dude that we just fought there will get healed. So again, if you're doing this on bolstering and you pull the dogs with those packs... You better make sure you interrupt that because if they get bolstered and she heals that dude to full, that's that. Um, you might as well just wipe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be like a 5 million health mob that you're going to have to kill from full then. So um, either way, you want to pull uh, this next pack as well. Like I said, usually some extra stuff going on here. But something that a lot of people probably don't know is that this fire actually does damage the mob. So watch. Uh, uh, we actually saw it uh, coincidentally in the video before without even trying. But um, if you take notice, the fire was actually there. Uh, if you take notice, the fire does actually damage the mobs as long as they're stood in it. Uh, I believe they'll have a debuff as well. So, um, yeah, as you see, uh, taking damage from the fire there. So, um, it's not a bad idea. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's probably worth it. Every little bit helps. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it to really shine on this pack here. Yep, there you go. As you see, taking about 2% of its health every every tick. So, uh, not the hugest thing in the game, but uh, it can actually help a lot on this matron. So, this is another one that, I mean, this dungeon, this part of the dungeon really is just, it's easy most weeks, but when it's bolstering, it's extremely difficult. So, again, you got three very, very low health mobs next to one extremely dangerous mob. So, there's a couple ways to handle this. Uh, apparently, as a monk, you can do a very, very interesting thing here. Whereas if you put ring at the right spot, I'm not exactly sure where, but if you put ring at the right spot, it's going to knock the dogs away from the mob. I think it's like right there. I've seen people do it, but I'm not exactly sure. So you, you have ring? I have ring. Try to put it right on the moon. There you go. Oh, wait. I, of course, I did it at the back the, like an idiot. But <laughs> what we were supposed to do was <laughs> knock the dogs away from the mob and not pull the mob. 
but I did the opposite, so it doesn't matter, obviously, but that's what you want to do on a, a bolstering weak in here. If gotcha. you have a monk, you want to knock the mobs away. Uh, if you don't have a monk, which obviously is very likely, um, you can just have basically any melee tank those three mobs away. So a lot of the times we might have, uh, you know, especially I've seen it a lot with demon hunters, demon hunters might run over to the side there with the skull, tank that mob there, and then uh, I'll take the boss, like the, the mini boss mob, the matron mob, and take it over kind of here. Just so no matter what, there's this line of sight kind of in between, and it's far enough away regardless. So uh, that will prevent the bolster, and th those mobs are light enough that a single damage dealer can kill them easily, but just something to keep in mind. You really don't want to be messing around with that bolster on that mob because it's very dangerous, very uh, high health pool. So. Gotcha. Okay, so Soulbound Goliath, probably one of the easier fights depending on your tank. Um, there's going to be really only one mechanic that any damage dealer is ever going to have to worry about, and that is the stun. Uh, as a monk, I don't think there's any way you could deal with it, but if you're playing a different class, uh, you can get out of it uh, very easily. Uh, I've been told there's ways that druids, and I think even shaman could do it too. Uh, I think if you're in Ghost Wolf when it picks you, uh, it will not stun you, and I think maybe even the same thing with cat form and stuff like that. If you shift forms or something, it will prevent the stun. Uh, obviously, Icebound would probably work too. Bop uh, will work as well. Immunity like that is going to prevent. So if you're a mage, ice block, etc. Basically, any uh, stun prevention you have, you have to use it preemptively though, because uh, obviously once you're uh, in that, you're, you're not able to get out of it. So but I don't believe as a monk there's anything you could do particularly. Um, but the main part of this fight that a lot of people probably don't know about is that when you burn the boss, so basically the boss's stacks, so let's show that off right now since we got some fire. Uh, the bosses, um, every melee, you know, every second, basically, you fight the boss. That might not actually happen on normal. But anyway, yeah, you're in Soul Thorns, so you want to kill that quick. Uh, but anyway, um, I don't know. This fight is actually really a big pain as a tank because a lot of the times it's actually difficult to get him in the fire. Yeah, there you go. So on normal, it doesn't happen. But typically, it's going to summon a bunch of little pink ghosts that come running around. And uh, they do a lot of damage. Basically, they, they melee you. So if, um, you know, what you want to do here is, if we're going to fight him here, and, you know, he's going to burn, the ghosts are going to come out and run towards him. So then you just want to kind of move to the opposite side. So if we fought him there, just move to one of the other three areas. Basically. Uh, you know, you'll avoid, you'll avoid getting hit by those ghosts in, as much as possible. But uh, typically, you know, if you're tanking, especially with the Brewmaster, or even like a bear or a warrior, somebody who's got extremely good physical mitigation, I, a lot of people won't even reset that, especially if it's a fortified week. Pretty likely that you won't even see that mechanic happen. The boss will just stand still and the tank will just deal with it. Gotcha. But I, I do believe that the boss's root mechanic will also do more damage, so if that does happen, just be aware you might actually die in that root. Now again, another point of randomness is which, which of these two doors uh, you're gonna go. Uh, there's not really a lot of impact here, uh, but it, it does mean that um, that you know you're gonna pull one extra pack, right? Uh, typically, you would. Uh, there's, there's a lot of likelihood that you're gonna fight this pack itself anyway, but yeah, just one way or the other, you're gonna have to pull this now. And this is where uh, we get a really new, uh, a dangerous new mob type here. It's called the Enthralled Guard. Also, we got another one of these, as you see, because of the uh, black. Right across from us, there's the... Oh, okay, the the, uh, the uh, organ. Yeah, yeah, the organ. That's it. Drawing a blank there. Uh, but anyway, another problem you see is this patrol. This patrol that just aggroed on us, it came from upstairs. It patrols down to this part of the hallway and then back upstairs. So another one that you can skip. It's a lot easier to skip if you go in that far door. Not the one we went in, but the, the opposite one. Uh, but this path, you're pretty much always going to aggro it unless you get really lucky. It can cause a lot of problems with bolstering again. Uh, but anyway, the guard itself is very, very dangerous. It's going to basically do... Let, let's uh, let's keep these in combat for a bit and let's see some abilities they do. Uh, they're, they're basically going to do two different abilities that you really need to try to prevent. Shadow Cleave right there, it's going to do a frontal cone. And of course, uh, you know, if you're a melee and you're not in behind the mob, probably going to take a serious amount of damage. I've seen people get almost one shot by it. Um, now, they should do another mechanic. Maybe they're not going to do it. Um, but either way, a lot of interruptible mechanics. Uh, typically when you fight this pack, I guess maybe normal or something, they're not doing it. Oh, there it is. Spirited Defense. So that's the mechanic there. Damage taken reduced by 35%. Okay, so this is 
high priority interrupts. You really need to interrupt this, especially if you're combining the packs. That's the captain mob, and then the guard mob is going to do the uh, thief. So together, this pack is going to be up for a long period of time if you're not interrupting this. It can be purged, though. So if you're a blood elf, of course, you can purge it. Otherwise, you got to be a demon hunter, shaman, or priest to do it as well. I think that's probably the only option. The other way. So I'm, we're about to make a big mistake here, and I'm going to show you this mistake firsthand. Okay. As you see, another one of these... Um, Organ, you know, the black stuff is coming out of the organ. That means when we run down there, we're gonna aggro a mob. Okay, so let's let's do that. All right, so we're going to the boss. Oh, the door's closed. Oh wow. So not only did we go the wrong direction, but we aggroed a mob that we did not need to aggro. And the reason the door is closed is because the path is determinant on which doors are open on this side as well so you know like i said it's probably determinant on the whole dungeon but basically long story short if you go up right you have to go up left as well okay so if your first path is upright you then have to go up these stairs and down to get to the heart's bane triad okay and these mobs in here aren't too dangerous. I mean, th this is kind of like a troll here. But again, another <laughs> another organ with a, a spawning a, a mob. I feel like this happened. Maybe on Mythic Plus, there's a limited number of it. Basically, there's like a six or so spawns, maybe more. And uh, typically, you're going to get maybe three of them. I don't think, like, we've had literally every single one, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Which is good. Yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's meant to happen there. It's maybe just not Mythic Plus. But either way, just be aware of, you know, those are where all these mobs spawn. I'm pretty sure we've now seen a good one that we have. Either way. Right, so you typically just kill the birds. Nothing special. It's the same mob types that you would have seen. Long story short, just in interrupt as much as you can. Now there's that patrol there. If you came uh, top left, which we'll talk about in a second, um, you want to go uh, just jump down here. Okay. Uh, and a lot of times, again, if you went right at all you're going to be way over count so the way i like to deal with that is just pull oh, we'll this side here hearts, uh, kill us uh, pretty much all this trash it's going to do that green circle there it's going to um, infuse you or whatever it's going to disorient you when it, it explodes and then the main mob is just going to do a channel so it's kind of a, a pain because the green is going to surround the mob and if you get too close you're going to get disoriented and the main mob is going to be channeling so you have to make sure you corrupt it otherwise you're going to run into it and get disoriented um, okay, so the bosses typically is fought. A lot of people fight in the middle of the room. But when you're tight on count, you really want to skip that left pack. Especially because in Season 3, almost always one of these packs has an emissary in it. So pulling extra, even more extra, is not ideal. Now, the best way to, that I handle this is taunt and then interrupt. But it doesn't really matter as a damage dealer. You can go over there and start fighting while the boss uh, runs over here. But the goal is basically get them on this side of the room. The main reason we want to do that is because a lot of, like, if you get, like, a mage or a hunter or a demon hunter, they'll use their movement abilities and they'll blink or disengage or whatever onto the other side of the room. Like, they'll do that ability and go, mm -hmm. like, 20 yards away from where they start. So if you fought them in the dead center of the room and you had, say, a demon hunter get mind-controlled by the first mob going to backflip into that pack over there obviously not ideal right <laughs> gotcha uh, and i don't know maybe monk would do the same i've never really uh, paid attention to who does it but i have seen us a lot wipe here a lot and it, it even causes arguments because then people complain about having too little space to to fight but you don't really have that problem you know you can fight in the middle of the room as long as the melee are on the boss and the boss is over here but let's talk a little bit about this boss because this is definitely the hardest boss in here this boss is known as the key killer for really any tyrannical week or any week where the healer might have to work a little bit harder, like Grievous. This fight is very, very, very bad because it's effectively three different encounters in one, and all three of them are particularly dangerous. So the first one is Sister Selina. Uh, by the way, uh, you can only attack one at a time. Um, one is going to hold like an orb, like it's going to be like attackable because of that. So you only attack the one. DBM will automatically mark that one with the skull if you have that add-on. Somebody... Mm -hmm likely in your group will have it but either way just uh, realize it's always Solina first uh, and then it goes to the right one Malady and then it goes to Briar next that's the combo uh, but anyway um, Solina is going to start and her main mechanic is that she's going to mind control somebody okay so um, big tip here is that if you're 
if you're a class that if they got mind controlled, something bad would happen, you want to use that something bad before it happens. So what I mean by that is if you're a mage, a paladin, you have an immunity, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you get mind controlled and you are now using that immunity as the mind control target. And you have to be killed, you have to be broken to 50% for the phase to continue. While she is mind controlling you, she is immune. And this is a, basically a DPS race encounter because after a long period of time, uh, if you do not kill her, she is going to cast an ability that will pretty much one-shot everybody. So uh, I might actually have to deal with her energy bar. I'm not exactly sure when, but all I know is you have a long time, and then when she casts it, you're pretty much done. Uh, it can be dealt with. I've even seen people try to line of sight it. I don't know exactly if it works, but all I know is that if she gets that cast off, you should recognize that that means your damage is too low. So okay. realistically, uh, you know, if you're in here doing a key, you might notice that in a pug, bad group, somebody dies, you're going to hit that in rage. But it is 100% magic damage, so, you know, as a monkey, you're pretty well equipped to deal with that. But realistically, if it gets off, something, something's gone wrong and you're probably going to wipe. Okay. So gotcha. that's Sister Selena. She's going to mind control. So again, you got to get that, ki that person killed mad quick. And then quickly switch back to Selena to kill her. Uh, you know, push her to 50. Then at 50, she switches uh, the orb to Malady. Okay. Malady is the second one, and it's going to do a. going to cast a, like a ring around people, all five targets. I like to AMS this. It's like a, a cast, and then it, it happens to everybody. So as she's casting it, you could AMS it, and it'll not go on you. All right. You could do the same as Paladin. You could bubble and not go on you, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, good idea to bubble there. If you can get mind controlled, you might want to bubble and get that off. Uh, and the other main mechanic on that part of the fight is that um, every time you're stationary, you gain a stack. It's a pretty common mechanic in WoW's history, but it's particularly dangerous on this one because, of, of course, the, the room we're fighting in, but also some of the other mechanics that are happening. Uh, if you're stationary, though, uh, you're going to take a stack of ticking damage that's gonna be going up and up and up. But you got to move to drop that. Easiest way is to jump. Of course, if you're a caster, got a lot of work ahead of you gotcha and then sister briar is uh, the final one uh, the final one of the three that you're going to fight and she's very complicated uh for the healer she's going to put out a basically a, a grievous wound like the actual fix but it's only going to go on one target and you have to get them topped off you have to get them above 90 percent otherwise it keeps getting harder and harder i believe i don't know if it actually gets harder and harder but basically if the healer isn't a hundred percent ready for it I've seen a lot of deaths here, even on relatively low keys. So if you're healing this uh, for the first time, just be aware that when Sister Briar is active, when she's not active, they don't do anything. They just cast a, okay. a weakened version of their main ability. They're making their main casted ability, which can be interrupted. You want to try to interrupt all three of these guys, but definitely the one that's active because it does more damage. But ideally, you'd have interrupts on all three. But either way, when they're not active, when they're not attackable, when they're not holding the orb, they're not going to do their other mechanics. It's only when you're actually fighting them. So this is why it's such a DPS race. Because if basically you have two waves of mechanics. Like for example. Sister Selena gets two mind controls off. You're going to wipe. Like that means you don't have enough damage to kill her. Before the AoE thing happens. So you're going to have to have either a massive strategy in place for that. Or expect to die. Uh, and then again. So yeah. Briar's just going to do basically a bunch of thorns damage. And also going to do that jagged metal I believe it's called. Where it needs to build off immediately so if you're a healer you got to monitor that debuff as soon as it's on somebody pop whatever you have to your best single target heals get that off people immediately and then back to work uh, but that so that's going to repeat twice every time one gets to 50 the orb swaps to the other one now um on a lower key and with really good damage i've actually seen a, them one phase it uh, you know do it before it splits basically burn selena from 100 to zero in a quick enough time that uh, you know, she couldn't actually change the orb. Like, in, in the middle of her mechanic, she can't swap. That orb can't swap. So if you do it at the right time, uh, you might actually be able to skip that. So if you're on a lower fortified key, like, you know, like a 10 fortified, that's pretty likely that that can happen. But on a serious key, the big question to ask here is, when do you want to bloodlust? A lot of people, they, they, they waffle a bit on the topic here. Um, for me, I always like bloodlusting on the pole. Pre-pot, all CDs up us on the pole. That's my go-to, right? You're going to maximize yeah. your DPS that way. But it's not always pertinent to do that because you might actually overkill it. 
Like, unless you're going to actually burn Selena from 1 to 0 with that Bloodlust, you might not want to do that. Instead, you might want to save it for either another of these three mobs or the second time you fight Selena. One way or the other, you got to make sure that you kill them all before the AoE goes off. All three of them can do it. So if you for some reason killed two mad quick and the third one's somehow full health or something like that, I don't think that's possible, but you know, if one's taking much longer than the other two because of the way you use cooldowns, you can still wipe at the very end. If it's literally just Briar up and she gets that ability off, you might still have deaths. And obviously if the tank and the healer die, then that's that, right? So yep. um, I don't really know what I would recommend lusting. You know, maybe people will have their thoughts in the comments, but um, we've, we, I've seen all different types of things work. I've seen Lust on the Pole on Selena, Lust on the second one, Malady, because, you, like I said, that, that's, that's pretty much, you don't want to overkill Selena. You don't want to, there's no reason to get her from 100 to 30. It's either 100 to 0 or 100 to 50. There's no real reason to get her to 130. But, it, you know, Malady, you don't want to go from 1 to 50 so slow that she gets two rounds of abilities off. So it might be better to Lust there, something like that. But the problem the thought process is there or it's better to just save it the second time around now it's also a good idea to save it the second time around because there's a lot of possibilities for mistakes in this boss and if you wipe here you're pretty much screwed if you blow us in on the pole because you're going to come back here that mistake is probably going to happen again because you now you don't have lust and uh this is a this is a key killer this is the boss that i think it's like up there the three hardest bosses in the game for sure i, I would say typically i might say this is number one or two some might say two or three, maybe even a little bit lower. But one way or the other, commonly regarded as the hardest boss in the dungeon, for sure, one of the hardest in the game. And uh, what, what do you think? Do you have, do you have any thoughts on this boss? Uh, I'm a little overwhelmed. Like, that's a lot of info, but yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, so let, let's just go through. Don't do any damage. Let's just okay. go through the fight, and we'll see how it plays out. And um, hopefully you'll see all the mechanics in action. Uh, but just just be aware, it is a console fight. Even though there's a lot of stuff going on, it's still like it's not going on that rapidly. You know what I mean? It's only the main mechanics are only ever going to happen once, unless your DPS is so low that they happen twice. If your DPS is that low and you don't pick it up the second time you fight them, you're probably going to wipe. That's that's the TLDR version. Okay. So if you ever see one of these mechanics from one of these bosses twice, and you don't have CDs up the second time you fight them, that same one, expect to wipe. That, that's kind of the the short answer. Gotcha. All right, so let's see what happens here. So again, claim the iris. She's now active. I'm going to pull her over here. She's going to cast an ability. I'm going to interrupt her to bring her even further, okay? Uh, so let's just, yeah, just don't even, oh, yeah. Um, okay, there you go. So she's still going to mind control. You see, now you're mind control. You actually incapacitated me. But there's a great example of what we're talking about. Now, we actually, oh, yes, this is really interesting. So we pushed her so fast just because it's normal that uh, she did the mechanic but then pushed after the mechanic. So we actually still had to break top out. But anyway, as you see, this is the unstable runic mark. That's the ability I was talking about. You can um, AMS that. Uh, we're also taking uh, the, the, the damage, if you see. Well, maybe it's not a normal act. But anyway, if you were standing still, you'd be taking extra damage. Uh, you, want, you want to jump to prevent that. And then now we find the final one. So as you see, the first two are still casting abilities. There's Jagged Nettle. It's, uh, it's on you. So inflicting blah, blah, blah damage every one second. Removed if above 90% health. So you're, you're actually going to die to that. That's going to kill you even on normal. How nuts is that? Crazy, crazy mechanic. Very, very, very dangerous. And uh, luckily Cop was able to get it off by healing himself. But even on normal, you can see the potential there. So now we're fighting them again. As you see, this one's already at 40. Kind of pushed her hard on the pole. It's very likely to happen. But, you know, we might see another mind control. But yeah, so I, I definitely think it's based on this energy. Uh, 42 looks like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's based on this energy. So I'm not going to kill Cop. Let's, let's let him... Uh, Something in damage though. So it is only a 99% damage reduction. He just died randomly. Anyway, it is only a 99% damage reduction. So it is possible that um, you could do a little bit of damage to them. It's still good to have them all clumped up. Because, you know, it, it is, even though it's like maybe like 10 damage per second on them, it's still a little bit of damage. Might get them down a percent or two. So let's see what happens when this energy bar hits 100. I'm pretty sure that's when she casts the ability. And as you see, they have different you know, percentages. They only gain energy when they're active, right? So that's why it's so important to kill them as quick as possible. Yeah, okay, here you go. Dire Ritual. So as you see, it's going to do a ton of damage. And uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, it, it didn't obviously do anything on that, but that's the mechanic. So when you see the energy bar get to 100, 
because they're holding the orb apparently increasing the caster's energy by two seconds every one second didn't actually know that but yeah whenever they're holding the orb i.e they're the actual boss they're gonna gain energy and if the bar gets to 100 then you pretty much wipe or you can try to survive it but realistically you're, you're gonna wipe yeah it ate through my touch of karma yeah. put up touch of karma and it it went instantly off yeah so so this boss is definitely like numerically very very dangerous like just no matter how geared you are how skilled you are if you don't know what's going on in this dungeon it's a bad it's a bad time this boss especially on a fortified especially on a week like quacking or a week like um grievous something like that you know so we're back here after all that time you might have forgotten that there is a organ right here so you might run out here and again aggro the mob that you don't need because you're all over count right yeah so either way we already did it but just keep that in mind okay if you're going up right side you want to go up left side and as you come turn the stairs make sure you check to see if this organ is going to spawn a mob if it's not then you could do it no problem but if it is, then you want to go up and around again because you don't want to fight mobs you don't need, especially since you're going to be over count. Okay, so we've now cleared the upper half. So uh, take, take a look at the map, you know what I mean? Uh, open the map and you'll see why this is so confusing because there's all these doors. There's all these different doors on the map and they, they lead you to the different layers of the dungeon. There's like actually five layers. It shows the upstairs map if you go to the upstairs, but you're never really going to need to look at the upstairs map. It's pretty obvious, you know, the upstairs map is... But gotcha. the cellar and the other two below it are the ones that we need to get to, obviously. So uh, if you're doing this for the first time or you've you know, done this mildly, you might realize that there's a couple different ways to get down there. Okay, so let's talk about those ways. Um, so I'm going to actually put a marker just so we have reference. Okay, one of the ways is here. Okay, so basically, if you start on the right side, you're going to end on this side. And this is the door you're going to use to get downstairs. Okay. Now, if you're going the opposite direction, which is the ideal route, if you went left first, then this would be the ideal route. You'd be end down this side. You'd kill Rawl, kill Rawl, and then we'd go uh, this way. Right? So this is like a little a butcher's block area here. Bunch of maggots. A lot of times there's an emissary here. But again, won't matter. See before, I'd imagine we'll see what's here. Uh, but yeah, just kill these maggots. Make sure you interrupt. And here's the other door. Okay, so let's show that off. All right down here okay this one's actually a little bit of a pain because you might want to jump over the railing something like that to get down here people might get line of sight while they do all right so let's go in and clear this place out uh, there's not much going on here long story short it's pretty much the same mob types that we've seen the whole time uh, there's one mini boss type mob but uh, just be aware that if that door closes you lose line of sight on the mob so you might accidentally click that door it happens all the time literally all the time um, so try not to fight them against the door or, you know, basically make sure everybody's on one side of the room. A um, little bit of weird uh, <laughs> stuff yeah. going on here. But this <laughs> satanic ritual in the basin here, I guess. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I never actually noticed that. But anyway, so typically if you went left first and you come to the, the, the route we just took is if you went the good route above, right? So now that we're down here probably need extra count so you might want to pull this pack for extra count but what you definitely want to think about is matron alma okay typically you could skip her with trout if you're over count uh, but it's very 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 good like it's the highest count per hp in the in the dungeon like, you need count if you need a lot of count you want to pull her she doesn't have that much health realistically it's a lot of count okay so that's if you went to the ideal side now let's go all the way back upstairs I'm going to show you the other direction, okay? You clear that stuff, and then you'd go downstairs. But that was if you went to uh, a side with Heart's Bane Triad first. We uh, we have gone to the Soulbound, or the Raw, the Gluttonous, and Soulbound Goliath side first. So now, pretending we've killed uh, Soulbound Goliath, blah, 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 we're going back. We just killed Heart's Bane Triad, and we're resuming where we just were. Now we're going down this door, okay? Again, the door is open as soon as you kill all three of the upper bosses. And now this part gets a lot a lot more complicated, right? The other side, you have a lot of room to fight these mobs in. It's not very dangerous. But down here, you really don't want to pull. Basically, Matron Alma would pat into us here if we fought any of these mobs right here. So what a lot of people do is they might aggro them and then run up the stairs. So you as a DPS, you need to be aware of this. If the tank is going to, if you see the tank start running up the stairs, don't stay down there and, t and attack. 
Because obviously you're gonna get threat and probably gonna get extra mobs pulled as well. Okay. Okay. But yeah, it's the same mobs. Really, so nothing, nothing new down here. It is. Yeah. Actually makes a lot of sense because I've seen tanks run down there and say, "Don't follow me." Yeah. Yeah. So that's one way to deal with it if you're fighting it. But realistically, unless you're doing like a key where nobody cares about counts. Uh, like, a, like a lower key or something like this, realistically, you're going to want to skip here, okay? Uh, again, those two packs plus Matron Alma are going to be way more count if you go to Raw side first and you come this way, you know, this is the way you've ended up coming. It's very, very, very likely that you're over count. But what a lot of people do is they get to this blood stain and then they shroud. A rogue, um, you know, shroud of concealment with the rogue. Or they can use an invis pot, right? You got invis pots, go ahead and use one of those. Just drink it and then run. You're going to run to the stairs down here, okay? Um, and if for some reason you can't do this, all you need is the healer to do it. Get down. The healer can get down to about here. Uh, and then every the other four people can aggro the mobs. And then they can just run to right about up here. Die here. Healer will be able to res you. Pretty uh, another good uh, good option if not everybody has a viz pots. But one way or the other, if you come down the way we just showed, you're going to be over count. So it's definitely in your best interest those mobs and again that's assuming season three or earlier season four is probably going to change everything about how people do don't do trash so we'll see uh, down here these mobs um things get a little bit more complicated it's actually those soul essences that we saw at the very beginning of the dungeon we've seen one or two of them since but down here you're going to see a lot more they don't really do anything but the soul charmer is a very dangerous mob type okay so uh typically what i like to do is this i like to grip it up here and pull this big pack get this out of the way uh, by the time that Soul Charmer gets up here, you can oftentimes have these other mobs killed, at least one of them. But the Soul Charmer is the main mob. Now, let's see if we can, don't, don't kill it, let's see if we can see its mechanics. It might not happen because it's lower. Yeah, there it goes. Warding Candle. So as you see, Warding Candle reduces mobs that are stood in it by damage taken by 50%. So if you have a complacent tank, expect this pack to take forever because the tank is not going to realize it. All right. And they're gonna have this mob in here the whole time. And it's a big deal. It really slows this mob type down. It's already got a lot of health compared to everything else down here. But a lot of the times you might try to pull it all. You know what I mean? Like you get all of this. Gotcha. And uh, this, this Mark sister will also do that mechanic. I, so, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, but either way, uh, if you if you see one down, you know you definitely wanna have a weak or something tracking that ability. If you see one down, you have to move it as a tank. If you're not the tank, it's going to be difficult to get them out of there. You could ring them, I guess. I was you just going to say, ring. yeah. Yeah. You ring them like, like that. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Ring them will knock them right out. Um, but the main one that casts it, it's not actually going to get knocked out by ring. It's immune to stuns, grips, etc. So it won't work on that one, but all the other ones will. So the best, best bet is kind of just kind of like kite them around this little area here. Make sure that they're never stood in that thing. Uh, okay, so now we're on to the... The, the main characters of this dungeon, the Waycrest family, been taunting you the whole dungeon. Finally, time to take her out. But this is not your normal encounter. Uh, two mobs, but as you see, Lord Waycrest has 10% of the health of the other one, which is kind of odd, right? Yeah. But the way it works is you have to kill Lord Waycrest four times. Uh, his health pool has to go to zero four times. I'm pretty sure it's four times. It's going to be a bunch of times, one way or the other. So don't get baited into thinking it's dying fast. I always kind of joke about this on the live stream. I was like, oh my god, he's dying so fast. We're going to crush this <laughs> fight. But then um, the problem is after the the final time she heals him, basically, yeah, she has like a... Here, let, let's see. I'm going to aggro it. And you'll be able to tell Husband, immediately he has like a, a um, bar. So, yeah, let, let's kill him real quick and then don't, don't kill him again. As you see, she's going to heal him. And he gets to like 10% or something like that. Yeah, there it is, vitality transfer. Um, yeah, so it's, it's based on her health. So 100% to 70 then it's probably, you know, to... to, to she's going to do it a couple times. Three times total. And then the final time she's going to... Yeah, the final time she's going to come out. So you're going to see here... I'd like to show, ideally, what happens here. Because the boss always spawns with more health. Like the Lady Waycrest portion of the boss. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that. And they switch to her thinking, oh, she's only at 20% health. Let's kill her. But even at 20% health... She still has more health than he does. So it's still better to kill him. So 
what I'm trying to get at here. You want to finish gotcha. it. I will never let Let's see if we can go. make this happen here. So she's going to spawn with 368k, and he still has 320k. So they have almost the same health, but he still has more. So it don't get baited into attacking her. It looks like you want to do it because she's 10% health or whatever, but you don't. You want to finish him. He is way more dangerous than she is. If you kill her, it's over. So you killed him, or you killed him, it's over, right? Then you just finish her up. So anyway, we didn't really talk about any of the mechanics. The boss is actually really straightforward. Interrupt as much as you can on that that like mechanic there. Um, that, uh, that he does like a cleave. The main dude does a cleave, and it's magic damage. So make sure it's damage dealers. You're not in front of it. Uh, otherwise, it's DK. You can AMS. You know, use magic mitigation tank wise. Um, the, the main thing is while she's still up there, she's going to be casting an ability called Discord Chaos or something like that. Uh, it's going to put these purple circles on the ground. If anybody gets hit by them, she casts another wave of it. It's kind of like a musical thing, like she'll cast one bar of it. And then if anybody gets hit by that bar, she'll cast another bar of it. So she's cast so many bars that she stops the ability. So you either gotta dodge, like make sure nobody gets hit by any of the first wave, or you're gonna be running pretty, pretty much from side to side the whole fight. So just be aware of that. In a pug, you're never gonna see, late. always see Wait, multiple. Who are you? And then the it only other mechanic on the main part of the fight is that green help. circle. Gorak it is a dispellable, I'm pretty sure it's a poison, it might be a disease, world. but it, it's a big green circle. Please, uh, you don't wanna dispel us. that, especially as the healer, just, just don't bother. His Let the person run out when it's comfortable for them. Uh, it, when it expires, it will hit another person if they're in it, and it will put it on them as well. So that's why you don't want to dispel it. If you did, you'd likely have five people with it, you know, especially if they're stacked. So it's better to just let the person go, run run it out when they need to, and drop it, and just make sure nobody's standing in it, okay? All right, gotcha. so this is probably the most complicated part of the dungeon trash-wise, and it's kind of unassuming. Like, you wouldn't expect it, but... At this point, you're, you're the, the timer's on. You know what I mean? You have a very little amount of trash left, and you have one boss left. So people really want to make up the ma maximum amount of time. Now, again, at this point, if you came the route that we just showed coming down here, the right side, you will probably want to try to skip at least some of this. If you have a rogue or you have a, an ability to skip it, you should. You can do that with controlled wipes. You know, have a shaman, an onk or something, battle res, something like that, skip it all. Um, yeah, you can invis pot if you didn't invis pot the previous one. Not a bad choice. I don't really like invis potting when there's a lot of stuff left. Because if you invis pot that previous thing, it means you're not going to be able to potion for this boss or the last boss realistically. Mm -hmm. Maybe you would because it might take so long. But yeah, that, that's pretty much the case. So invis potting here is better. If you're going to do rogue shroud invis pot both of these, you want to invis pot this one instead. But, you know, a lot of people just pull it now because I'm going to show you this crazy tip. You might not actually be able to replicate it because we're too melee. But basically, uh, I'm going to aggro. I'm going to put my D&D &D down there. It's going to aggro all of these mobs, okay? Then we're going to run it over here, okay? If if somebody is up on this windowsill, the mobs cannot jump. So get, get up on that windowsill. Do you see them jump? Are they jumping on me? They cannot jump again. They're always going to jump to their furthest target. And you're up there. They cannot get there. So you can actually attack them from up there, right? You know what I mean? Like, you can still attack them. And as long as you're up there, they cannot jump, which is the hardest part of this. Sure, the hardest part of this. Absolutely. You do, a ton, you do a ton of damage every time they jump. And you really got to make sure that... You really got to make sure that when they're jumping, uh, you're either using, like, defensives, you know, your big healing, or you're just preventing it entirely by doing this. So, you know, a little bit of an exploit, obviously. Uh, it's not quite snapping level exploit. But this is something that you might see uh, very, very common, okay? So usually if it's, you got a healer and range, they'll be up there. You as a melee, you don't really have to worry about it. You can, you know, up there as a melee, it means you're probably not hitting all five, uh, however many targets you've pulled. But gotcha. typically, if, if you have, for some reason, no range, like you got a holy pally and three melee, somebody's going to have to stand up. So just be aware. Now, you know, if you're doing like a low key and the tank doesn't know that, gonna either have to try to explain it to them or suffer the consequences of doing it normally and it's really not that dangerous so if you're gonna fight them normally for some fix that or doesn't happen because your tank doesn't know what he's doing what I would recommend is fighting them right here basically right in the center here uh, a lot of people they fight him in the trench which isn't a good option because 
First of all, unless all five people are down in the trench, you open yourself up for a world of hurt. The mob is going to jump from the trench up here because that, that idiot healer ranges up here. You know what I'm saying? But then to get back down there, they have to run all the way down and around back to the trench. So you're just killing your DPS by doing this. So if you're not going to fight them on the windowsill, I try to get everybody on one level one way or the other. But this would be the level you want to fight because if you die here to this trash, which, which happens all the time, this, the trash is extremely dangerous. If you die here to this trash, you actually res right here, right in the dead center of this little area here. So oh, nice. it's not the end of the world. It's actually pretty easy to circumvent a, a full wipe here. Even if the tank dies or somebody key dies, they can just res. They might die again, but literally you're basically fighting them on a graveyard. So there's no reason that you should actually fully wipe to this. But you might still end up dying. Like <laughs> might have like five to plus five plus deaths to it. So. That's pretty much the dungeon. Uh, if you get to this point with like, you know, multiple minutes left, expect to time the key. Because this boss is pretty straightforward. There's really only one mechanic, which is kind of crazy for a last boss. Usually the last boss of a dungeon is the hardest one. Uh, but this is the complete opposite. Heartsbane Triad, which has potential to be the first boss, is absolutely the hardest boss in here. No matter what week it is, I think that's always going to be true. Uh, and this boss is really easy. There's only really one mechanic. He's going to do... Um, gonna send out an ad an ad's gonna spawn and it's gonna channel on a person that person is gonna be stunned while it's channeling you could prevent this in any way that you think like you know you could fear it knock it back stun it anything corrupt it with death grip ring of peace those types of things knockbacks anything you can do to stop that cast you want to do that otherwise you just kill it as fast as possible a lot of people pad off the boss and they just cleave it which is fine on most keys but you know if the mobs basically if you have two mobs up then you need to target them. Like They're both going to stun. You're not going to be able to stop both of them very easily. You have a third up now. You're done. It's over. You're going to have... Everybody's going to be stunned. So you just want to kill them quick. Then there's this little thing of fire on the ground, which uh, when you uh, pick it up, it's going to give you an extra action button. And the boss, uh, there'll actually be an emote. The dude will be um, quickly burn it, he'll say. But that means that um, when the ad dies, you want to use the extra action button, the fire mechanic that you got, I'm going to throw it on the ad that died, and it's going to go away for good. If you don't burn the body, he's going to periodically res any ad still there. But basically, let's say you killed 10 ads, and for some reason you didn't burn any of them. It's not really feasible, but if you didn't, you would he, would get, he could then res all 10 of them, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, never going to happen. You're dead. <laughs> something. Yeah. So... That's pretty much it. The only other mechanic he does is this physical uh, AOE. It's, it's actually, I'm pretty sure it's physical. Uh, but there you go, Death uh, death Touch Slaver. I'm going to summon that, and you'll see it here. It's going to, uh, Dark and Lightning, you want to interrupt that too. But the Slaver is going to, you know, a Dread Bolt, a regular cast. But there's the fire there, so go pick that up. He got it, he got it. Cop's got an extra action button. Now you can throw it on the corpse, go and do that. Boom! Look at that, big plays. Hashtag see that mob. So he's not going to be able to res it now. He's still going to spawn another one, though. A Dread Essence is going to be that AoE. Uh, maybe this match will take damage from it sometimes. Anyway, either way, it's just an AoE. Just use a defensive or get ready to kind of heal afterwards. But that's pretty much it. He's going to constantly summon these adds. He's going to need to be interrupted. And Slayers are going to channel an ability which you're not going to see here on normal. But every time one of them dies, it happens. Ideally, it would be the healer doing it. Um, somebody the most mobile, usually the healer. Person who's doing the least. Yeah, so the Dread Essence is the, also not only is it the A, but it's also the mechanic that it reses the mob, by the way. So you just oh. want to make sure. So this is actually, it heals the mobs too. This is something else I should have mentioned. Um, if the mob is alive and he uses the Dread Essence ability, it will heal the mob to full. So if the mob spawns and he's doing Dread Essence while you're killing it, just stop. Tunnel the boss for a bit, let him dread essence, then kill them off. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of complicated. A lot of the times what happens is, you'll be like 2%, the mob will be at like 2%, and he's going to heal it to full. It's kind of troll, right? But yeah, he's got to deal with it. So that's everything. So it's pretty common in the old days to not have count at this point. Um, and that was more with reaping. But now, uh, I don't, maybe with season four, it's going to happen again. If that is the case and you don't have count, you can talk to this chick here, Lucille Wakerest. Talk to her. She's going to take you I back help? to the start. So go ahead and do that. You'll be back to the start oh. here, which is perfect anyway for this video. But typically then at that point, what you might want to do is come to the right side here. At this point, all the doors are going to be open. 
so there's no possibility of having to run around awkwardly. And uh, this pack that we aggroed by accident before, right in front of the fireplace, really good option to get the last few pieces. Oh, it's the easiest pack in this uh, area here, but... Oh, nice. But then so you'd anyway, have to run um, all the way back to get your loot. Yeah, yeah, you have to run all the way back, but... You've completed the timer, that's all that really matters, right? True enough. Okay, so so what do you think? Now that we went through the entire dungeon, anything that you're still unsure of? Um, I, I think the only thing for me it, that's going to be hard is it's going to be practice running through it all the different paths to get them set in my brain. But it's good that I kind of have an idea of all the different paths, and they all kind of yeah. lead back and bleed back into each other anyway. Right. So the only thing to think of here that I haven't really touched on. So if we start on the right side, start mm -hmm. on the raw side, okay? Let's let's do that. Like, okay, we, we've come bottom right now. We're here. We're killing this pack. I'm going to pull again. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to come in here, pull this pack that's right here. I'm going to pull them out into the hallway because they have that dangerous AOE kind of dude. We're going to kill them out here. Then we're going to run back in. We're going to go now hug the left here. There might be a spawn from this organ. Realistically, if there was, it would have aggroed with the pack that we just talked about. You want to make sure you don't pull that pack over there with the D&D. &D. Then hug the wall here. Uh, go down here okay don't go too far that's the stairs you don't want to go that way you want to go down here okay we're gonna um we're gonna go this way uh i guess maybe if it is deterministic based the start is deterministic of the rest you might be able to skip the rest here and you might go in here pull a couple packs here you kill raw blah 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 go uh go out this way kill the pack here uh, progress towards next boss here and then you're gonna go to that side okay the reason i'm tell telling you all this is because if you die on this side of the dungeon, the door is not open, right? So if you're over here fighting this, which is the, on the way to the third boss, you die to one of these packs of trash. Happens all the time. The trash pats, like I said, it's going to pull extra stuff. Sometimes you might wipe through the trash. But if you died here, you'd be back at the start. And I think this is probably your biggest, the thing that I've seen you have the most trouble with, is getting back to where we are when you yeah. die and res at the start. Because at that point, I'm completely lost. Yeah, but now that you've seen every route, you understand, like, you just, just go the same way you went the first time, you know? So, yeah. It's just getting used to the map. The map is a lot more confusing than it needs to be, because it's got all these stupid doors. You, you probably agree with that, right? All oh, yes. Really, really. Yeah, it, yeah, it's way more confusing than it needs to be. Like, Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. But that's, pre that's pretty much it. I mean, it, it looks like a maze of a dungeon. Uh, but it's it's really not. There's only one way that you can go at any given time. Uh, if you start on the right side and you wipe ahead of the third boss any time, you just take the same path you went. If you if you start on the left side and you wipe any time ahead the third boss, which would then be Rawl, the third boss would be Rawl, you would kill the, tri the triad first, then the tree dude, then Rawl. You would do the exact same thing. Whatever route you went in originally, you would take the exact same route. You know what I mean? So you just got to have the wherewithal of remembering where you started and where you're ending and don't look at this mirror it is so freaking freaky man this dungeon they really oh it's scary just looking at that anyway um this dungeon they really mastered the ambience and maybe a little bit too much i mean think about this this is the only mythic plus dungeon in the game that has this carousel of options you know what i mean like yeah. there's so many different ways you can go it's almost a little bit unfair and i think a lot of people would agree that it's unfair even blizzard because during the MDI, they don't allow it to be random. They choose the route before the dungeon begins. So that, that's, wow. that tells you everything you need to know about this dungeon. You know what I mean? It's, it can be very unfair at times. If you go top left, you have a significantly higher chance of upgrading this key. Because you're going to be dramatically below count. You'd have to go out of your way to get count at that point. Whereas if you go right side at all, especially upper right, you are now going to be dramatically over count. Because you're going to pull extra mobs on the way to Rawl. And you're also going to have to go up on the left side when you come over to Heartsbane Triad. And you're going to have to pull at least two extra packs than what you might have pulled if you just went downstairs there. Yeah. That's, that is a lot of info to, di to digest for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I mean, once you get... If you can just kind of like train your memory to be like, all right, I know which way we started and that's the way we're going to go. It's not not really a maze there's there's only one way to go like downstairs here it's the same thing like you could enter either direction and it's still going to get you to where you want to go you know what i mean 
Yeah. But the worst, you just you went the wrong way. If you went down this way and you hadn't cleared that, you just go back around to the other side. And here, you know, this is this is the other side of the dungeon. So, so really, what I need to do is take a note when we're starting, whether we're going top or bottom and left or right, so that yeah. I know yeah, top just, left uh, or bottom run. right. Follow that. It's easy for me because whenever I stream this, people always bemoan when we get one of the ways. Like people are like, "Oh, you got so lucky, you got the right, the good side." Or people are like, oh, lol, you got top right, GG, you might as well leave, you know? So it's like, you know, just whenever you start the dungeon, just say out loud. This is the best way I've always known to remember things. Just speak the words, top right, bottom right, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you might remember. It'd be easier to remember if you do wipe or... But obviously, you know, ideally you just won't wipe. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember, and this is something I remember back in college all the time. They, they taught us in psych class... You say something three times, you'll remember it. So, like, top right, top right, top right. And then yeah. hope, hopefully you remember it. That's a great little strategy there. I like that. I always just say it, but three times is even better. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's it. So, uh, part of the series, we're going to talk about what the biggest mistake you could make. We're calling it the biggest noob moment. The biggest noob moment is get lost. Don't get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, it's the truth. Like, if you yeah. get lost, if you die... You've hurt your team, right? Especially yeah. because, like I say, you could be, like, think of it this way. It's effectively like a 10-mile race, okay? Mm -hmm. Starting uh, mile one is going right through Raw, mile three, four, five. Then you get to the left side. You're at Heartsbane Triad, mile 10. You're at the finish line. Once you kill Heartsbane Triad, all the doors open. But you wiped at mile nine and a half. You now have to rerun the first nine and a half miles to get back to Heartsbane Triad, you know? Yeah. So th that's bad enough. Wiping and then having to run through the whole dungeon. This it's a small dungeon, but having to run through all these hallways is a big problem. You got to do that on your own. That's a problem. Yeah. But guess what? You get lost. You go up and sit it down, or down and sit it out, or whatever, uh, whatever you could do. Oh man, that's a big mistake. So don't make that mistake. And also, don't be fooled by these excess doors. These don't do anything. Okay, I mean they do open, but. This is never going to be one of the ways you can go. It only opens once the entire room is open, and gotcha. uh, it's just not, it's nothing. You don't, would never go that direction, you know what I mean? So, don't be fooled by those excess doors. They're not ever going to interact with your path. Gotcha. So, that's everything. Uh, any questions or anything? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. It's just going to have to be, you know, practicing rote memory type of thing for me, I think. It's the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, say. if you're really struggling with it, you can literally just come in here, run it on normal a bunch of times, and just practice yeah. the, the different options, you know? That but, might be something I do anyway. Just yeah. to... It's a, to, it's a noob to pro tip. Just come and run it on normal and reset it. And figure it out. Because it's that much of a... a, a, of a <laughs> Yeah, you basically have to learn three different dungeons, you know what I mean? Like, the yeah. different options, you're going to have to learn them all, and uh, it might take you 10 or 15 times to even see all three of them, you know? You might never get them, so, yeah, you just have to see them. Okay, well, that's uh, that's everything for this one. If anybody has any questions after watching this, let me know. Hopefully this helped. Again, the big thing is to just know the paths, and uh, basically, you know, there's a lot of interrupts, um, even on bosses that you really got to be careful for a lot of key mechanics especially on hearts bane triad that you got to be careful for so just get in here and practice it once you get it down i think it's one of the easiest timers in the game in fact a lot of people believe it, it is the easiest if you get left side if you go left side people do believe it is the easiest timer in the game uh, just kind of objectively because you need so little trash you could choose what you want um and that's that so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one peace